Hello, everyone. Welcome into the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show. I am Philip Jordan, the in-studio host and producer of Dutton Woods Football on 96.9, The Legend. Each week, Jerry Coleman and Ken Lambert are joined by Dutton Woods head coach Jed Kennedy to recap the previous game and preview the upcoming opponent. Tonight, head coach Jed Kennedy will look back at the Dothan Wolves' 38-34 playoff clinching victory against the Opelika Bulldogs from last week and preview tomorrow night's matchup with Jack High School in the, in the regular season finale. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, head coach Jed Kennedy will be joined by Jerry Coleman and Ken Lambert right here on 96.9, The Legend. Thank you for checking out this episode of Wiregrass Daily News Sports. You can find the podcast over at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcast. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review, and I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you just leave four stars, you are just a straight-up hater. You can follow me on social media over at pjordansec. You can email me at sportstalkfieldjordan at gmail.com. All right, Coach, let's start out with a big victory Friday night in Opelika Bulldog Stadium, uh, Opelika High School, uh, 38-34, kind of a must-win, definitely a must-win for both schools to actually have an even shot at getting in the playoffs. Kind of talk a little about that environment there and uh, kind of some changes that you saw just right off the bat uh, for the Wolves Friday night. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, anybody who's been around Alabama football knows a great tradition of Opelika High School. You know, I've now been down in Alabama five seasons, and I had never been there. My first two seasons, um, uh, three seasons, actually, they were 6A. When they moved up to 7A, they came to us last year. And, and all I'd heard from everybody I talked to was it's just a really hard place to play. Um, they obviously have great support. They've got great tradition. Um, as I told our kids, it was a round one playoff game. It was pretty simple. The team that won advanced to the playoffs. The team that didn't, their season was going to be done. And, you know, I really thought at the end of the year there was – five really, really good football teams in our region. Um, Central's obviously a class of their own, and I thought us, us other four teams, um, you know, they, they've all been one or two score games between, you know, Auburn, Opelika, Enterprise, and us when we played each other. So we knew it was going to be a battle. We knew going on the road was going to be tough. And, um, you know, I thought that, you know, really we played really good for, you know, probably 90% of the game. We came out and scored on the second play of the game and, got a stop and drove all the way down, you know, got went three and out the next series, the third series, drove all the way down to the six point game or down to the six yard line and couldn't score, kicked the field goal. And it's crazy how football works. You know, we had a, um, our special teams have been awesome all year. Zach Holmes has done a great job and we just, we had a lapse on, on our kickoff return unit and, and they returned it and it made it seven to 10. And what's crazy was, you know, football is a game of momentum and man, that just sucked the life out of our sidelines. And it felt like for the rest of the half, we were just, just holding on, you know, and, uh, you know, we got some stops. There's a couple of times we got some first downs, but going into the halftime down 14 to 10, um, you know, like I said, really, I think one play just sucked that out of us. But, you know, with that being said, when we, you know, we kind of knew all along, if you looked at the history of Opal Lake of this season, um, they, they, they have been, I mean, they were up, it was a, it was a, a seven point game with enterprise, um, going into the fourth quarter. They were leading by 13 in Auburn in the second half. It was a three-point game with, with Central late in that game. But if if you could get them late, you, you could kind of, you know, if, if you were there in the fourth quarter, you know, we really think that things could lend to us. And I think if you look, especially offensively, man, we just wore them down. Um, you know, we rushed for, I think, you know, just over 450 yards. And, I mean, 7-8 football against a team like that, um, man, that was just uh, – Awesome. Like I said, we kind of knew that all along that if we could stay in it till the end, um, we really thought that we could wear them down with, with our offense, our defense. You know, if you take out the last two series of the game, which that's kind of its whole other thing. I mean, man, they played good. Held the kid to 60 yards pat. I mean, they had, they had under 150 yards offense going into two minutes left in that game. And uh, again, I, I'm not happy with how we finished on that side of the ball those last two series. But you know, again, like I told the kids, a sign of a really good team is when you cannot play your best football for stretches and still win. And that was against a really, really good football team. So um, we treated it all week as a, as, as a, as a week around one playoff game. I know a lot of people think that playoff start next week for us. It didn't it started last week. And uh, you know, what just, uh, you know, if you just look how far this program has come in two years, you know, to, to, you know, and back to back weeks, go over to um, Wildcat stadium and win tough place to play, then go up to Opelika, you know, to win a game at, um, 
you know, Bulldog Stadium, which is one of the toughest places in the plate to stay. It's just tip our hat to our kids. Our kids are really unfazed about that stuff now. They they know how to compete. They know how we how we play. They know what we do. Um, they come to work every day. And again, just honored to be their head coach. And um, you know, excited for senior night tomorrow night for our seniors. And uh, you know, certainly, like I said, don't want to look forward to the playoffs, but we're certainly excited about that second season. Coach, kind of pick up on the environment a little bit. Uh, before the game, we were looking back at Opelika's record, and they seem to play better at home. They're, I mean, most of their losses had been on the road, and then we started looking at their home schedule, that really back-and-forth close game against Auburn. I think they lose that one 30-31, and we're like, okay, so this is a different place here. But as you mentioned, those last two series, uh, evidently the two-minute offense is something they spend a lot of time on. That seemed to be in their element coming down the field, and really Gagliano starts that for them. And uh, they were as soon as they could snap the ball and throw it, it seemed like uh, that was happening there toward the end. I, I told Jerry, I, I've never, I, I don't know why I'm so nervous, but there was about a minute, I think just a little over a minute left to play, and we had a 10 point lead. I, don't, I shouldn't be this nervous, but these guys just seem to be on a roll right now there toward the end of the game. Well, it was great. We, we, we were up 17 points with two and a half minutes to go. I mean, yeah. I mean, just, you know, and I think that's part of it. You know, I think our kids on that, and, it, and everything falls back on us as coaches. I don't know if our kids let our guards, we dropped two interceptions and back to back plays. If we pick off either one of those balls, we take a knee and we win 38 to 21. But you know, their quarterback, he's a Division One player. He's got multiple offers, and you know, he just willed them that last, you know, the the, the drive before the last one. I mean, they were in third downs. He's scrambling. Um, you know, he's he's making throws. He's you know doing those things. And you know, our thought was if we could keep the ball in front of us, um, you know, they, they can. It's going to take them two minutes to move down the field, and that was really the case. And then they hit a long pass on third down. And they got up. We fell asleep. They snapped the ball quick and threw the ball in the end zone. So they were they were still in the thirty five yard line when that happened. And what's what's crazy is if if we don't leave that guy uncovered, it probably takes them four or five or you know so yeah. minutes to score. And there's only probably 30, 40 seconds left. But we gave them. You go to that defense so you don't give up the quick score, and that's exactly what happened. And then we come out and they they kick the onside kick. It just was again. And like I told the kids afterwards, I'm not gonna. I wasn't happy with that last two minutes, but with that being said, I'm not going to let that overshadow really how we played for 40 minutes of that football game. You know, yeah. like I said, if you take out two and a half minutes, our defense held that offense under, you know, 130 yards or something like that for, for 40 minutes of football. And if someone would have told me that going into the game, obviously I would have, you know, said right there, we'll take it. So, you know, again, I look at everything in football, in life, it's a learning experience. Um, we learned, you know, and now when, when we get put in that situation again, um, we can look back and say, hey, do you remember we were this in against Opelika? We put our guard down, look what can happen. So that falls on me. we got to be better prepared for that situation and uh, um, can promise you that we worked on that more than one time this week. <laughs> Coach, you, you mentioned environment. Ken and I noticed uh, even pulling in the stadium course, it, it's a beautiful facility across the street from a Southern Union uh, Junior College there, and you saw a lot of tailgating people parking across the street tailgating from, uh, you know, quarter of a mile, probably out from the stadium. And just like you said, that that great tradition. And, you know, for being on the home side, looking across the visitor side, we finally had, a, not, not not but, you know, different location. Like you said, we haven't been there in a long time, if ever, uh, you know, fans getting there. But really, uh, they, they've got a big tradition, sellout stands on the home side. But on the visitor side, it, you know, it seemed like it was kind of, Unlike in the past where we've had a home game with great student section, the band did a great job of kind of getting them in, getting us back in the game kind of from a from a pep standpoint, especially when we're 17 up and Opelika started coming back. Could you kind of hear that from the sidelines? If we could hear it all the way across the field. Yeah, and I think, you know, just kind of touch on a couple of points that you talked about. I mean, you know, number one, I mean, you know, you talk about the tradition at Opelika and how hard it is to play there. I had someone tell me something after the game. They've made the playoffs 20 out of 22 seasons. Um, you know, they had 27 straight seasons without a losing record. Um, I mean, those are pretty impressive numbers when you when, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so obviously when you have that kind of tradition, they're always going to have a, um, you know, a, a great following, um, a, a good crowd, a crowd that's into it. Their band was great. And I think what was awesome for us was we traveled well for being over a two hour trip. I thought we had a, um, we had a good crowd there. And, and again, our band, our cheerleaders, um, you know, it, it's just, to me, it's just all about the high school experience for everybody. 
And, um, you know, like, as you know, when you talk about, you know, you go to these places and, you know, Opelika's got a great football program. They've got a great band too. And, you know, when you can battle, you know, they're, they're going to play loud when we have the football and, and it's awesome that our band um, can get loud and, 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 and be great when they have the football. So it really um, just, just creates a great environment for everybody that's there. And, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, Coach Smiley and Coach Erickson with the cheerleaders and the job that they do, um, and Mr. Broughton, the job that he does with his band, it's just, uh, it's just awesome for our school. It's awesome for, for really everybody. And, um, again, just, you know, it's, I've, I've said this numerous times on this radio show, there's, there's a lot of great things going on in Dothan city schools right now. And, um, you know, football, I think is one of those things, but, you know, we've got a lot of things and, and our band and cheerleaders are right along with us. And, and, and certainly that glad that they're awesome as far as coming with and supporting us, you know, through this journey. Yeah. Coach, let's talk about uh, the Wolves offense a little bit. I, I went back, looked at the numbers. Uh, unofficially, we were pretty close. I missed a few yards there in, in the carries, but you had 11 yards passing. Everything else, that 97% of your offense was on the ground. And you say uh, close to 450 yards rushing. A.J. Alexander had 247 yards. Tamarian Peterson, 147. Uh, just about equal in carries. It's just that A.J. had a few more explosive plays. And then Tamarian had all the uh, the scoring plays, but uh, you had success early, second play, big play right up the middle. So you kind of had success, seemed like running between the tackles early, and then when they seemed to collapse that, then you had success later getting on the edge, and that's where a lot of those big plays came. And I'll throw in too, uh, we saw your offensive line and those tight ends and H backs blocking drive blocking some of those guys off the line five plus yards down the field just dominating there early on for sure yeah and, and just you know i just want to talk a little bit about you know kind of our offensive philosophy we go in with you know having the ability to throw it 20 times if we need it having the ability to throw it five times if we need it and you know the, the, what's been unique is um you know we've been very efficient passing the ball out of the single wing you know play action passes you know, to Jalen Corbett, some things we've done. And and people the last couple of weeks have really honored that. And when you do that, you know, they essentially double cover and they put a guy head up on them. They put a guy over the top. And, um, you know, we tried a little out road early. We tried a, a double move early. They did. I mean, they essentially had two guys on them both times. And, um, you, you know, we, we I, I think what what you know I people always ask me you know what 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 I like about our offense is is I love our offense because it has the versatility to do what we need to do to be successful. If that means like Friday where we've got to you know run the ball between the tackles and you know AJ had 17 or 18 carries, PD had had 20 carries. Um, you know I, I just have the ability to have an offense where two guys can play two di two different positions and combine for 40 carries. Um, you know, but yet in the, the same sense, you know, if, if you need to throw the ball, have the ability to do that. So, you know, we're going to do what the defense gives us. And, um, you know, I, I thought that their secondary was good. And again, I thought, um, you know, and, and what's, what's the, the interesting thing is, you know, we, we got in some situations where we spread them out. They have two division one defensive linemen, number 96 been off of everybody in the country. You know, he's 6'5", 270 pounds, and number 91's got a bunch of offers, UAB, Troy, I think, Missouri. Um, you know, so they've got two guys out of four on the defensive line that have SEC offers. You know, so so you've got to be able to do things that can kind of counter what they can do. And, and then the reality is when they when they have those types of people, it, it can present a matchup problem. We try to one-on-one -on -one pass block those people. And if you notice, first couple of times we went to throw it, 96 was all over Sam Broadway. Um, you know, but like I said, we thought if we could go at them, we could wear them out. We did that. Um, you know, I, I was I, that was my big concern. I talked about it last week, I think, was, I mean, their D-line is as good a defensive line as we, we, we'll face all year. Um, very central-esque. I mean, heck, like I said, they've got four kids and two of them are power five sec type football players but i thought as the game went on our guys did a great job of getting movement on those people and um, i think i showed that a little bit when it was third and one on our 30 yard line or fourth and one have a chance to you know continue to stretch the drive out and there was zero hesitation that we were going to be able to get a yard and um you know it just you know like i said it worked out that time and um you know i, I just you know we're young up front. All three players on our offensive, on our strong side of the ball. We got two juniors and a sophomore. We knew they'd get better as the season went on. Aiden Jackson, Myquan Williams, and, and um, Myquan Williams and Lewis Snell, and they're getting better and better as it goes. Um, so, you know, it's a, it, it's a. I always say it's a continually work in progress, but I'm glad with the strides we made. And um, again, to go in and be able to rush for 450 yards against that team on the road, um, that, that I probably won't tell the kids, but that was pretty impressive.
Yes. <laughs> We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll talk to uh, Coach Kennedy more about last Friday night's game, get into playoff uh, scenarios, and also tomorrow night's game against the Jaguars at Jack High School out of Montgomery. You're listening to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show here on 96.9 The Legend. Thank you for checking out this episode of Wiregrass Daily News Sports. You can find the podcast over at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcast. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review, and I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you just leave four stars, you are just a straight-up hater. You can follow me on social media over at pjordansec. You can email me at sportstalkfieldjordan at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show here on 96.9. And Coach, kind of staying on the last Friday night's uh, game, talking about uh, uh, the defense. Uh, of course, Hashmark was on uh, Opelika side a lot uh, other night, so we were able to see a good advantage point from uh, from broadcast booth. But, uh, you know, talking about remar- uh, uh, quarterback from, from Opelika and – you know, Dury had a great job. It looks like covering, had some opportunities there for interceptions. But even when they tried to, I'm going to say trick plays, uh, Dury and Smith and, and all those guys never really missed a beat. It looks like they stayed at home and covered covered their their air pretty well defensively. Yeah, you know, they were running. The, the one play that they hadn't shown a lot this year that they tried on us was, and it, it's, you know, it's basically where they would run a, a run play to the right. The quarterback typically right would run to the left and keep it, and they've done that all year. But they were now going to the left, and they were also adding an RPO in um, to the receiver where if the the corner got his eyes in the backfield, he'd been wide open. They tried it three or four times, and 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 Dury did a great job covering that. Um, you know, their quarterback. You know, I, as I sit back and look at that, I mean, he is as good as we've won against the last couple of years. Um, you know, he uh, he's a competitor. He's got a he gets the ball out as fast as anyone that I've coached against in a long time. Um, you know, those quick screens, he gets it, um, gets it out to the perimeter so fast, um, you know, and, and I'm just glad that I mean, I'm glad we won't have to go against him um, anymore. I mean, I think he's that good. And, uh, you know, he like I said, he you know, he, I mean, he's one of two quarterbacks selected for the Mississippi Alabama all star game. I mean, that's the best of the best in the state. So. Um, like I said, I thought our defense did a great job, and uh, we had a couple chance at picks. And uh, you know, I think it's come back to the thing. You know, we haven't turned the ball over on offense, and our defense has been good about you know creating turnovers. And even though they didn't create turnovers on um, Friday, they were right there, batted down some balls, caused a snap over the head on the fourth and one when it was a ten point or nine point game late in the game. Um, so certainly, you know, as we continue through this, you know, tomorrow night and hopefully playoff push. Don't need those guys continue to play well on that side. Coach, the other thing we we noticed was we start thinking back about halftime was how what a well played game it was in terms of discipline. I think there were only two flags the first half. There was a motion penalty on Opelika, and then we have the delay of game, which was by choice there to try to draw them offside, give you an extra five yards to punt there. But even the second half was well played. Very few penalties. Uh, and it's always good when that's, you know, when those things kind of go unnoticed in terms of officiating and slowing down the game. But uh, and that's going to play uh, big, obviously, as you move into the playoff scenario where every every little uh, hiccup can uh, slow you down drastically. It can. I thought it was a, a very well officiated game. To me, the, the 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 best officiated games have very few flags. And I think that's a tribute to both programs and, and both groups of players of really air-free football. Um, you know, when it just, it, the pace was awesome. They kept it moving, thought those guys did a great job. And, um, you know, especially with our offense, you know, you can't get behind the chains and, you know, you don't have holding penalties and those kind of things. And you can stay ahead of the chains. It certainly helps us out on that side of the ball, but uh, um, certainly something we're going to need it moving forward. And, you know, to me, it's just, you know, it's, you know, we don't we don't talk about we don't think there's any little things in our program. We think there's details, and obviously penalties are details. And those guys certainly did a great job with that Friday. Coach, tomorrow night senior senior recognition night for for the team cheerleaders, I believe, and also the band. And of course, it's a Thursday night, uh, kind of a scheduled game. Should have a good crowd. But what do you know so far about uh, Coach McCall and uh, the Jaguars of a JAG out of out of Montgomery? 
Um, you know, I think that, you know, uh, you know, coach Bell's been there, you know, he's a head coach for a couple of years, does a great job. He runs a very disciplined program. If, if kids don't come to practice, they're not going to play. He does it the right way. You know, I think the, you know, we kind of knew last year, you know, they had, and I think we had talked about this. They had like 28 seniors that night we played them and they only had about 40 some players suited up. So the math was that, you know, so they've got a very small senior class. Um, you know, obviously they're in a, they're in a, they're in a building stage with that program. And, um, you know, any coach who's coached a long time has been at every aspects of it. Um, we're a better football team than they are. Um, I, I hope we, we can go out and play clean football tomorrow in a, in a, in a game that, you know, we can, can kind of continue. We, we we're playing our best football right now. If you think about the last few weeks, um, I know we had the hiccup in the middle up at central. I didn't think we played very good, but really that second half against Baker, and how we played against Enterprise and how we played for most of the thing against Opelika. Um, you know, I, I just want to continue that momentum and uh, just me make sure that tomorrow night our kids don't put their guard down and, um, you know, look at who we're playing and think we can just show up. To me, it's bigger than that. We, 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 we've got to do the, we've got to, you know, we've got to do the things that got us here. Um, and if we do that, um, you know, hopefully should be a, a win for us and, and more importantly, a chance for our um, 21 seniors to be able to, you know, be recognized on senior night and, and, and hopefully all those guys get some good quality snaps in front of the home crowd. It seems like forever since we've been at home, I think it's been five or six weeks. So, you know, really probably the last time they'll get to play at Rip Hughes and just want that to be a memorable experience for them. Coach, and thinking about that uh, home experience, Jerry and I obviously were talking about that, and we were thinking about playoffs, and you look at all the possibilities, and will we be on the road, and those kind of things. And I remember telling Jerry, "Hey, all I know is we're at home Thursday night, and I'm excited about being home on yep. Thursday night." But with that, uh, you know, it made me think there are still a lot of people in the community, uh, and they were hearing about the success of of this Dothan football team, and maybe they don't have you know ties to Dothan High School or attended or came from out of town but there's still a lot of people that haven't had a chance to see these wolves play live or, or be uh, at rip Hughes for one of these games i think thursday night tomorrow night is an excellent opportunity to come out and to see some uh, see a great football team great great environment and really enjoy high school football in dothan alabama it is and um like i said our crowds have seemed to grow in every game you know the last two years and um you know, what used to be a, a, a good crowd is now a bad crowd, which is awesome. The, the reason uh, Coach Noble asked about moving the game up to a Thursday, National Peanut Festival starts on Friday. Um, and obviously that's a huge thing in, in, in this part of the state for 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 really this part and, our, and, and the people of Dothan. So we just thought it gave us a chance to get a better crowd out to have it on Thursday. Um, and, you know, now knowing that we're a playoff team, it gives us an extra day to prepare for whoever we may play in that first round uh, matchup. Coach, staying on the conversation about about seniors, what what do you think? Uh, uh, probably a seniors that have made probably the biggest impact this year. I mean, coming in last year, they came in as sophomores before uh, you brought your staff in, but kind of bought into the system, done a great job of kind of, you know, we we see. Uh, to Marion all the time kind of coaching up, but maybe kind of a senior that may have surprised you this year, kind of his leadership ability that, uh, may, you know, may miss next year. You know, I, I think that the good thing is I'm having a hard time thinking about that, not because there's a few of them, but because there's a lot of them. Um, right. You know, and I just, I'm going to talk about two kids that come to my mind. Number one is James Carroll. James was a kid that played JV defensive line as a junior outside backer, um, was not a varsity player at all. We moved him over to tight end. Has been a phenomenal player for us. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. He's a hard worker, um, you know, and that's just a, a great um, kind of thing for the rest of our players to understand that it may not be happening right now or right in front of you, but if you continue to work and, and, and do things in our program, um, that you know, there, there's light at the end of the tunnel for you getting on the field. So again, a guy who didn't play, you know, really any meaningful snaps as a junior, but never missed a day in the weight room and a great teammate. And everybody loves to start every snap or every game this year and play almost every snap at tight end. The other one's a kid 
um, Reggie Myhan. You know, Reggie started some as a sophomore here, did not start for us last year, did not start for us this year. If you ask people on our program who's their favorite player on our team, I would bet you 75% of our coaches would pick Reggie. He's got a great personality. He never misses a workout. He encourages his teammates on. He gives us the best look out of our scout defense every single week on the defensive line. And, and I think it's, it's easy when you have guys like Dury and Tamarian Peterson and Lewis Snell and Sam Broadway and Jalen Corbett, guys that you see their names in the paper, you know, but really to have a solid football program, it has to run deep. And, it, and it's more than just those names that you, that, that you see or maybe hear on a Friday night. I mean, if we don't get a great scout look all week, we can't perform on a Friday. You know, when I look at a guy like Reggie and um, you know, Reggie has embraced his role, and, and I'm excited for senior night tomorrow. He's going to get a, um, a good amount of snaps, and, and he's, he's deserved that, and he's earned that. And we're big about, you know, ha having kids earn things. And uh, so those were just two kids that came off um, the top of my head. Coach, you want to ask a question really about uh, scheduling. We've talked about that a lot in the past, and, and you, you've said, hey, we always want to play the best competition we can. That makes you better. And especially those out of region games, we've talked about the Bakers that we've played and some of the, the Birmingham schools in the past. And and you think, wow, you know, our region's so tough. Do you want to continue to play those games? Now that we're moving into the playoffs and we're talking about tiebreakers, you can really see how those out of region games, because that's going to be a big tiebreaker of how those teams have played uh, in determining those spots now as we move forward into playoffs. Yeah, and it's a you know it's a unique thing. Basically, there's a three-way tie for second place. Um, Auburn, Enterprise, and Dothan were all six and two. Um, Auburn beat us. We beat Enterprise. Enterprise beat Auburn. So it goes into a tiebreaker. Um, you know, I, I take great pride in just coaching the team. Try not to worry about those things. Um, from my understanding and the way it's been explained to me is, it basically goes off non-region wins, opponents' records. So you would take for us the record of Carroll and. Um, Baker, add those up. Enterprise would take the record of Ufala and Rehoboth and add those up. And Auburn would take the record of Hoover and Ramsey and add those up. And what's crazy is I think it's going to be within one or two wins of who wins that tiebreaker. Um, and then it goes to head-to-head -head after that. Um, I don't know. I, I, if, 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 if I had to pick right now, I would say that I think there's probably a pretty good chance we'll get the four seed and head down to um, – back down to Mobile and play Mary G. Montgomery, who's 10-0 and ranked third in the state. Um, those things are out of our control. We've played good football all year. Um, as you know, it always comes down to coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Um, and I think those things work both ways. There's been balls we've got that bounced our way. Obviously, there's been a couple balls that haven't bounced our way. But, you know, to, to me, the number one goal going into the season is qualifying for the playoffs. We've done that. At this point, um, you know, when I look at the region down in Mobile, I think we match up well with any of those four teams. Um, if, if, if we're fortunate enough in this tiebreaker to, to, to have it shaken our way, it'd be awesome to host a game, whoever we may play. Um, those things will all sort out Friday night. But like I said, I would say if I had to guess right now, um, I would assume we're probably a, a over 50% chance that we're probably going to head down to Mobile and uh, – play Mary G Montgomery with us, the four seed, them being the one seed. And I know um, sometimes it can be hard to grasp that because, hey, we beat this team, but it's like I said, there's people that in the state organization that make those decisions. And uh, unless you win them all, you kind of got to fall under kind of whatever they have set. Yeah. Well, that'll wrap us up for tonight's edition for the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show. Make sure you come out tomorrow night. To Ripley Stadium, senior recognition night, last home game, regular season game, that is, for the Wolves. You've been listening to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show here on 96.9, The Legend.